hi everyone welcome back to my channel today i'll show you how we can add a parent child relation between two emitters and like a system so something like this uh, yep so let's cut into it and let's start from scratch so i have this uh, a project i'll had a, a half cone whatever you can call it and have just given a simple spawn count and gravity force so it just moves downwards so now to spawn another stream of particles or just a single particle we generally use two methods first is just uh, let me add an, another emitter i just add an directional burst delete everything here i don't need any of them Okay, I have this spawn burst instantaneous. Just turn it off and I can use spawn particles from other emitter, right? And just fix issue. I can name it parent because we want this parent to take particles from this, right? make the size a little bigger maybe 20 right so this is like spawn particles from other emitter and now if i play this you can see it spawns every frame right depends on whatever our spawn rate is and our lifetime is right like 2 to 4 as a lifetime so it will generate on every frame right Similarly, there's another method by which we can generate a location event and have a stage here. It's called event handler, and we can assign that location event and maybe like three particles, every one particle, right? And we add a location. We see location event right so now it just spawns all the particles over right here right and we can make it infinite or same like system so that it spawns for the wherever it is going but now if i need just a single particle and it should follow wherever our parent our head goes right so one thing we can do is just add a sprite render if you want just a simple sprite to follow it just a simple sprite render and can you'll always follow that right and you can change the sprite render to uniform make more bigger sprites right it will always follow this but sometimes we do need some other elements like a different mesh or some maybe something else uh, something like this which we need a separate control of for rotation or anything scale and so how do we do that here i'll just delete this delete location event we don't need this so now uh, we have just a simple spawn boss instantaneous which is a one particle which is generating on the grid right there's no nothing else here right Very simple right let's get the position first we want the position to be updated every frame right so I'll just create a module called position update I can create an input here which will be a vector right and I can name it position here or whatever you want I can just name it input also or a position also right so now what we need to do here is just convert this vector into a position vector to will automatically do it for you. 
later right and i can put this inside here in the input position sorry particles position right i can put this here and now whatever we supply this vector like whatever we have on this vector it will update the particle positions accordingly right so i'll just apply and put it here and we want per frame to be updated we'll just keep it here position update right so now if i change this you can see we can put the same gravity force also but uh, i will make to make something a uh, dynamic input something called a uh, dynamic inputs from where we can take a lot of things actually we can do a lot of things but for now we will take the mesh renders position and we'll bind that position inside here so it will automatically update whenever the position changes of this planet right i'll create a dynamic input here i will make it get position right so you if you want you can delete this pen and just add another pen which is called particle attribute reader it will be on top particle attribute reader and now i can convert or uh, get the position let's just type get now you have a lot of attributes which you can get from these particle attribute it can be a self oh uh, i will show you this let's say i get position by index right and i type on position Uh, if you have apply this uh, output here it will automatically convert this position into a vector and that's fine that's what we need so now inside here you can see we have position update and if i put this dynamic inputs which was get position right It shows me like which emitter we need the binding from so it can be other or self so from self we can do that or if we want other we just need need to name the particle not the particle just the emitter and if i do that like i just delete this ones again and get position and other i'll just make it parent cool save it i'm just checking if my spellings are all right particle attribute reader value position update as this yep everything seems fine we need this to proper thing p o s i t i o n and then it should work i don't know why it was an issue before I just renamed it and now it's fine. So you can see now the particle actually follows this thing. Right? So now I can add a mesh render just to show you few things. So spiral up and can increase the mesh size. Something like this. can override materials also particle mm -hmm. okay. yep that's not bad. Right there. 
first we can add a mesh orientation we want this x so now what happens is here is which mesh axis to orient which is x axis and it is oriented towards in the x axis which is fine so now we will just take this x axis and orient towards z axis right that's all and now you can do rotation stuff and all those things and whichever space you want if i make it in world it will just do like this above well, that's better to do it in mesh and you can animate all these things with proper parameters and and it will always pick it's very helpful and other stuff for projectiles and things which needs to be done inside Niagara and not in Blueprint. So cool. Thanks and have a great day.